Hi everyone, Wally Nichols with the Asset Guidance Group Weekly Update for the week ending October the 8th, 2021. Well, uh, we've got about two and a half hours left in the trading day today on Friday. The, all the major indexes are up for the week, but the, the big news really was the jobs report kind of this morning came out a very big miss. And so markets initially shrugged that off and considered. So the markets are going to end the week, uh, all the major indexes are going to end, end the week up. But that's not the end of the story as we're trading uh, here about, about, about a little over two and a half hours left in the trading day uh, for the week, uh, as it were. Uh, the, the red that's appearing on the screens is because some of the uncertainty that's been caused by the passage by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, consortium of 138 developed countries, finally got together and said, hey, no matter where you're at, you're going to pay a minimum tax, a corporate tax of 15%. So that took uh, a, a while to get through, but we finally got consensus on that. Ireland came in and uh, yada, yada, yada. So they did that. But the, the, the impacts on the market, uh, are that created uh, uncertainty then and pulled back. Right now, uh, so, so even though the, the indexes are finishing up for the week, I'm sitting here looking at the, the Russell 1000 and 3000. They're starting all the majors. Everybody but the the, the Nasdaq, okay, is getting ready to uh, okay maybe start another another run next week. Don't know how big, don't know how long, but that's that's what we were trying to posture for by the end of this week and flow into next week. There's some new uncertainty here. Uh, treasuries uh, spiked into the 160 range for the first time in in, in a really long time. So. That shows a lot of confidence. That shows the bond markets to me are pricing in the end of the tapering by the Fed. Uh, and, or, I mean, the beginning of the tapering by the Fed, the end of their of their easing policies uh, to the extent that they were. And so belief in stronger economies, but we're getting this rotation now. Uh, and it's certainly because of those higher rates not going to be in big tech, okay? So FANGs, are really taking a hit on top of all the Facebook uh, bad news uh, this week after that 60 Minutes uh, interview. Uh, Facebook has worldwide uh, issues on regulations. They'll probably come back in and uh, and beg for regulations uh, if they can bottom out the uh, the stock price. So, so right now, Facebook is at uh, is at a discount. Speaking of that, so if you've got the biggest ones going at a discount on the heels of regulatory pressure, increased corporate taxes. And uh, spiking interest rates, then uh, then you need to start looking at where the rotations are going, and that's in small and mid caps and value in the S and P 500. Because right now the momentum plays, the growth plays are really giving in to uh, the play on value. So there's your there's your tip of the month, as it were. Uh, there's your there's your play for for this week. Okay. Um, Moving out of those dis uh, discussions into the new tax that's not coming out of the, the, the plan that's not coming out of the White House, not it, it's coming from from the it's originating in the Senate. Okay, on top of all this, is addressing corporate buybacks, and so uh, you know this this is the the programs that we're going to see whether or not it's going to fly between now and the end of the year. But uh, Sherrod Brown out of Ohio. And uh, Ron Wyden out of Oregon have sponsored a bill in the Senate to tax corporate uh, share buybacks at 2%. Uh, this was on the heels of just a stunning uh, tweet by uh, Julian, uh, Julian Timmer of uh, Fidelity uh, Investments. And uh, he reiterates a chart in the statistics that, uh, uh, and I, I put the, the link, the citation for this and, and the link below the video and, and in the email, but uh, the chart, uh, he's showing since 2004 for the last 17, almost 18 years, U.S. companies have spent over $11 trillion on stock repurchases, okay? That's about 25% of the entire market cap of publicly traded U.S. equities. Wow, he said, and yeah, I echo that. Wow, that's a tremendous amount of money. So if they're starting to look at taxing that at two percent, then with all of these other headwinds that you have facing uh, the companies, it's probably going to put a damper on uh, continuing corporate buybacks. And the recent survey that they uh, that that was done uh, to poll uh, CFOs and, and COOs. 
were about, or CEOs, uh, as it were, uh, you know, how is this going to impact you? And and well over fifty, uh, or around fifty five percent of them said we're gonna we're gonna it would cause us to tail back our stock repurchases. It's no secret that the twenty seventeen Tax Cut and Jobs Act was passed a, a, tr a trillions of dollars of tax breaks to companies in an incentive for them to repatriate uh, the trillion dollars plus worth of wealth that was being capped overseas in their, in their foreign subsidiaries. And so they brought that back in. The idea was if they got the tax cut that they would invest in the United States and bring jobs back to the country. But instead what they did was look at the bottom line and they got a bigger juice out of buying their own stock back with that extra money and uh, and, and pumping up the uh, the markets at the expense of uh, expense of arguably U.S. workers. So this this two percent, if it went through, would put a quietus on that activity, and uh, and and put a, a bit of a disincentive. Although uh, there won't be. Let me, let me not say disincentive, but they're just saying that, that the end result would not be, uh, with the OECD's new 15% minimum, it would not, it would simply make uh, the foreign money less available to repatriate to the United States and then invest in the stock market. So what would they do with the extras that they would have? Well, probably incentivize dividends. I think that would be the natural play. If you're, if you're going to have these extra monies, Instead of repurchasing stock and bumping up everybody's stock options in the C-suite and the stock prices, then uh, start paying dividends. So, so adjust your expectations accordingly. So if the price of equities uh, and, and the very, very large caps are going down, but the dividends on those are going up, then adjust your rotation accordingly. All right, that's... A, Pretty good hit on, on taxes this week. We'll come back with some different looks at why we think taxes are going up around uh, the, the nation, uh, going to have to in the near future, and some other angles. Okay, it's been a great week for us here at Asset Guidance Group. If we can help you, don't hesitate to reach out. Go to our, our website, assetguidancegroup.com, and check us out. All right, until next week, stay happy, and I'll see you next time.